You are now listening to the Super Coach Experience. The Super Coach Experience. Super Coach Experience. The Bound Gang. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Supercoach Experience podcast. What a start. What a night. State of origin. New South Wales. Tommy Turbo, man, the match. Could you expect anything less? Actually, a quiet game from him, but, you know, moving forward, uh, he's he's just going to carry New South Wales for another 10 years. I'm joined here by Mikey. How are you, Mikey? Yeah, good, mate. Good to be back off my long stint, and it's good to see that your your head's so far up Turbo's ass still. So uh, it's, it's good, mate, but I, I don't think it was just the Turbo show, man. Those those Panthers really showed up, and the whole Blues team were fantastic, man. I really was expecting a close game, and I loved every minute of it, man. Uh, you know, Brian Toll's one, one of my favourite players, and to see how good like him and Luai did on debut, it was, it was just awesome to watch as a Blues fan and as a Panthers fan. So uh, let's hope we can keep it up, man. Those Queenslanders will be ready for the next game. So, uh, yeah, keen for the next one. No doubt. I was very sceptical on players like Jerome Luai, Brian Toho, and uh, Liam, I guess not so much Liam Martin because his role was exactly what I thought it'd be. But Brian Toho and Jerome Luai looked like they were just playing club footy on a weekend and they really lit up the Origin Arena. Um, Latrell back at centre looked so damaging. I can't believe how good he looked. Um, I guess at fullback at his club, he's had to play a different role, but it's back to the Latrell that we knew was so damaging. I know he's damaging now, but it's just it's just good to see everybody firing. And Teddy... Had a good game, but was probably the fourth best out of the five back five. Yeah, I'd, I'd only put him in front of um at O'Carr, but yeah, just just the way, yeah, you, you nailed it perfectly. There. Just the ways the Blues combined and Latrell at centre. I you know I thought it was going to be Tom lining up with um you know to oh he did switch to that side a lot, but yeah, Latrell Mitchell and to oh they found a beautiful combo and Brad Fitler um. I was really skeptical. He'd done a good job. He took some risk with a lot of these positions and they all compensated him. Every single one of those picks, like I was, you know, iffy on Tariq Sims. Uh, it was a big quarter name, Lua and To'o and, and Martin and all those players really stepped up to the plate. So it's a good all round side. And there's a lot of guys missing from that side that, you know, might struggle to get back in there. So fingers crossed that Angus Crichton um, can't get back in that side. And um, yeah, we get him for the buy round because how how could, how could you uh, make any changes to that side bearing injury uh, with a performance like that? I guess the number fourteen Jack One could be up for debate. I guess he hasn't really uh, like uh, he wasn't on the field that much longer than anyone or that much shorter than anyone else. Um, and then there was Martin who was on there for not that long. So uh, it was I mean, like thirty minutes. And I mean, I guess it really depends. What the – like, if Liam Martin really gels with the Penrith boys, then it'd be hard to drop him. Um, I guess Wine's been there a couple of years, so it'd be really hard to drop him too. So I'd be very interested to see, see how it goes. Um, yeah, and, yeah, for Crichton owners, they're probably cheering right now because Tarek Sims absolutely killed it. Um, he, he pretty much did an offload that went 15 metres – Right in front of Brian Toho's chest that let him score. So um, that was an excellent. Try. That was so good. Like, uh, um, uh, uh, to be fair, Tarek Sims. Uh, uh, I didn't. Oh, I mean, I did have doubts over him because of his form, but he's definitely proved in that arena that he can step up and kind of be the anger guy. Um, so, yeah, good on the Blues. It was a great win, and it was very fast and. Um, Oh, I think everyone played well, especially Nathan Cleary. He oh. he's just um I'm so glad that he performed a decent game yesterday because there's been critics over him playing uh saying oh, he can't perform in the bigger games, et cetera, et cetera. But um he did it last year in game two. He's done it this year. 
in game one. Um, and I feel like that'll just give him confidence. And this is really good for the Penrith players leading into the finals and the grand final this year if they make it. Yeah, well, the, those four Penrith players that, you know, were in the starting side, it really showed you why Penrith were doing so well. They struggled without him on the weekend, and it shows you how key they actually are to their side. And I just thought it was so impressive that they basically took their club form and played the exact same way and just molded it into a blues fashion. Like, oh, did what he normally does, 220 metres plus. And, you know, look, I know I'm a Penrith fan, but I was, I, was, I was very impressed with the way they converted that. And it just shows you why the Panthers are doing so well. So... Yeah, it's an interesting week ahead. And, um, you know, these rounds straight after the origin periods are always a tough one for super coaches um, because, yeah, let's face it, a lot of them have been named and we don't know who's going to back up. We're getting a bit of word, but uh, it's going to be a week where you're going to have to be on top of your tactics. Yeah, for sure. So I suggest that everyone puts their team as if no origin players are backing up and just see how you go from there. And if they're named, to put them in your side. Um it's already confirmed that Jake Trebojevic, Staley Cherry Evans will play, but Tom Trebojevic is out. Um, in about is he definitely out, Savs? Yeah, he's is definitely out. It's, conf- it's confirmed yeah. by Manly. Um, and in about thirty-five minutes, which we may be done recording by, um, yeah, so we'll Penrith be, yeah. will confirm whether Cleary, Luai, Toho. Uh, and Martin and Yo are in. So, um, because yeah, they got to drop some players, don't they? Yeah, we'll see who gets dropped. Yeah, so I think they go down to a 21 man squad. So, really, you would think. Are you sure they should go down to 19, shouldn't they? Or have they oh, yeah, no, them? no, that's it. 21 is what's named on Tuesday. So, they'll go down to 19. So, we'll get a much better indication on who's playing. Uh, personally, I Cleary is probably. I say he's probably a hundred percent chance of not backing up. I don't. I don't think he's going to play subs. I actually didn't think after watching it after two uh, hours work. I didn't think he'll back up either. But looking at it, I think that you know Penrith really need to you know get back to a win. And I think most of these guys will play. Um, yeah, I'm hoping Luai plays as a Panthers fan because I need. I think. You know, well, May back on the bench, and you need a Luai um, burden combo there, and I think that's also very good for Super Coach. Um, but yeah, with that laceration, it's good to see that Cleary's only be confirmed a laceration. So let's just, um, yeah, I don't think he'll play tomorrow, but um, I'm just glad he didn't get a three to six week in- uh, injury because, yeah, it would have made it tough for Super Coach. I agree. I could imagine Timmy sitting on the other side of this call, just saying how in awe of Nathan Cleary, he would have been just watching him play on with a bloody face. He would have been like, that is a hero. Um, He would have said something absolutely crazy in just, um, yes, just admiring Nathan Cleary and great performance. Um, Personally, I am only relying on Jerome Luai to play. Um, I guess somewhat Payne Haas I'm relying on to play as well. Um, But... If Jerome Luai does not play, I'm going to have to make a, a trade. Um, so I guess moving on from the origin talk, um, we will talk about it throughout the podcast, but how have you gone over the last few weeks and what trades are you looking at making this week and how does origin affect them? So yes, it's been a big few weeks. I've been out for a couple, made a few trades, um, Last week, I did bring in Kenny Bromwich last minute when my plan all week was to get Suwali a week early. We know that Suwali's not named this week. And, you know, if Tedesco doesn't back up, which the word I've heard is he will, if he doesn't, uh, Suwali comes in. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm watching Teamless heavily with that. So I'm, I'm spewing that I bought Kenny Bromwich in. That's another trade I wasted. I've only saved two at this point, which isn't horrible, but I'm not happy with it. I did want to save more. But um, I've stayed really flat. So over the past time since you've heard from me last, I've really I've stayed in the top 10,000 and I've only been going down 100 or moving up a little bit. So 818 for me last week, which I filled with 13 players. Captain Gutho, that was a good move. Um, yeah, if Sabs, you did implant that one in my head for once. And um, yeah, it was, it was a crucial move. I think without that, I would have had a very bad week. So I moved up 312 spots and I sit at 8685. So I'm happy with that. I'm saved two trades. I'm at that rank. I'm in striking distance. I'm just waiting for that massive week, man. So I'm really spewing. I didn't get Suwali because I could make two big moves this week. So, um, yeah, my, my plans this week, my two trades aren't settled. I've got all these plans. I've had to really look. I really wanted to get Ra- Rami in this week. If Penner rested all those players, I think Johnson, Alua Johnson was on my mind because I think, you know, 
If it's May and Burden in the halves again, I think Penrith can get some points put on them again, although I think they'll be better. Um, I was really keen on both of those guys. But, um, yeah, with the way things are working out and who I think is going to get rested, I really can't afford not to pick up Suwali. I want that cash grab. So all my trades revolve around if Suwali's playing or not. So I've got to – if he does play, I'm going to go Brian Kelly to Suwali. If he doesn't play and he needs to start to, to come into my side. If he doesn't so you, play, have, yeah, you yeah. have to play Suwali? Oh, 100%. I want to play Suwali. If I buy him, I'm going to play him against a Titan, just more so that he's got a really low break even. He'll play the round 17 buy if he doesn't get injured, and it's a good way to make 300K because go, I'll go Kelly, Brian Kelly to Suwali. Um, and he's versing the Titans. I really liked how he played last time. I think, you know, the Roosters are going to run all over the Titans this week. So um, if he plays, he'll, 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 I think he's in for a decent score. And I've definitely, yeah, I'll play him for sure. Um, if he doesn't play, I'm going to go Brian Kelly to Alex Johnson. Uh, why Alex Johnson? Like, I know he's got some low scores in him, but I really think he's in for a big one this week against his matchup. I think they're going to run all over the Knights. And I think he could be that guy that, you know, goes on that Jack Reed run and, if I'm picking him up for 460, I think I can make a bit of money and he could become a fifth cent a week that I can hold if I don't want to sell him. So um, the only reason I'm grabbing him is purely if I don't – I could have gone uh, Ramey in a week early, but because Penrith played that Friday game, I need a center wing after Saturday and I'm not ready to buy Tupo. Uh, Tupo runs into Penrith and uh, Storm after this week. I'd rather not spend the money. I've only got 100K. And that 100K is an interesting trade. I'm going David Clemmer to Luke Thompson. Uh, I know a lot of people are worried about, you know, uh, when these players come back, how's his minutes? Look, there's not many good options in the front row. I'll be happy to lock in Pangai and uh, Thompson. And the main reason is if I get Thompson, I don't have to play Paulo each week. He's too inconsistent. Um, he didn't play a huge amount of minutes in Origin Paulo, but he is, uh, like he's playing on uh, Sunday. He gets a bit of rest, but... I still don't think he'll play a heap of minutes. He's in for a 40 or 50, where if I get Thompson, I'm looking between 55 and 75. So I want to get in a guy. I think that's better for me going forward, and I'll, I'll finish the year with Luke Thompson. So, uh, yeah, with that, I'll have no money. That's why, yeah, it's Suwali or Johnston and then Luke Thompson. So, yeah, bit of a ramble there, Savs. But that's just my thought process because with Origin, the key reason of, of doing this, if I get Luke Thompson and I have Paulo sitting there, if Kenny Bromwich, who surprisingly got named – um, doesn't get picked or Josh Curran goes out injured, I can then use Paulo to reserve him. So with this tactic, I will be fielding 17 no matter what. Over to you. Sam. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were still going. Um, yeah, I really admire your your thought process and you've got a lot, a lot of different plans in place depending on what sort of happens. So, um, I mean, it, it, I feel like it's kind of weak where – which way do you go with your side? Like, do you do you get a pod like Alex Johnston, or do you get a cheapy like Suwali, or do you get a gun in like like Tupo? Like, there's so many ways you can go this week, and there are so many options that you can go with. Um, personally, uh, if I was you, I mean, because you have to play this person, I'd probably go Alex Johnston. I'm kind of saying I don't have to play him, Savs. It's just more so if I get either of them, I want to play him. I've got plenty of options to yeah. play in the center wing. Like I'm, I'm going to probably play Stains this week against the Sharks. Yeah, he's just got a, he's a freak. But um, yeah, I just think in um, yeah, I think well, Suwali will get seventy plus against uh, the Titans. And, yeah, uh, just, uh, if I'm buying him, I'm playing him. I agree, but I'd probably just make the trade anyway. Just to yeah, generate, think, yeah. just to yeah. generate that money, like he's definitely playing round seventeen, and he's going to make Johnston a break even a zero with that draw, and I think yeah. he'll score a hat trick this week. I think that way, if I get Johnson Suwali, I pick up Ramy and Tupo, bang, there's my center wing sorted uh, for the buy, and I'd I'd happily close out with most of those guys. Yeah, not a bad shout. Um, <laughs> I am looking at a lot of center wing options um, around that price range. Uh, so you can downgrade someone like Staines or or Laurie and make cash off. There's players like Joey Manu who in round 17 will play in the halves possibly or at fullback. Um, I've looked at him. His stats probably don't add up for me to 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 worth buying him in. Um, I think he, he scores when he plays center. Is just no good. Like he's scoring tries here and there, but um, 
it's just not what I want. I want someone in my side who I can keep for the rest of the year. Um, someone like Marcello Montoya is someone I'm looking at very heavily. Um, he's actually started the season and um, he started quite poorly, but since Ken Mamalo has been out of the side, he's has he's got scores of 92 and 82 on that left wing, and we know that that Warriors left wing is their attacking side. Um, he's 370K with a break even of minus 33 at the moment. Um Downfall is he plays Melbourne this week. Um, but after that, he, I think his draw just softens up Knights, a little. He's drag, got Newcastle Ducks. Dragons and the Sharks in round 17. I'm really keen on Marcelo Montoya as a really super pod. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I do have some other ones like Ronaldo Molitalo, who, um, you know, with Sean Johnson in the side, he's – Always a chance to score a try, but I think Montoya is the one I'm really eyeing off. Um, Sharks have a decent draw as well with the Cowboys, the Broncos, and the Warriors after Penrith. Um, but what are your thoughts on them too? Yeah, so just firstly, Subs, who were you trading to them? Did you say it was a Staines you were getting rid of? Well, actually, uh, all, at the start of the week, I was always planning on going Staines to Suwali, um, but yeah, with Suwali not being named... I'm actually doing Dane Laurie to Corey Harawira-Naira at the moment. Um, Ooh, just fight on the CHN chain. With me. Yeah, I, I think he's a really good purchase. And he, uh, he's somewhat safe. And with the second rowers, there's not many that have heaps of upside. And I think he has a lot of upside that we can use. And we can hold him for the rest of the year. I am a bit scared about their rotation, but... He seems yeah, to. Have, if they lose to Broncos, he'll he'll get dropped from that second row spot. It's as, it's as simple as that. Hundred percent. But I feel like he's. I don't think they will lose. I mean, they really could, but the week off could have done him wonders. And um, Corey Howarinere is a great player, so um, he's survived a lot of axing since he started in the side. Um, but. It, it all really depended on whether Luai plays or not. So if Luai plays, uh, if Luai doesn't play, I'm going to have to trade Luai to Cody Walker and, and use them to trade. So Laurie to CHN and Luai to Walker. That'll set me up for round 17. Um, and if Luai does play, I'm going to save that trade. I'm going to save the second trade. Um, but Montoya is someone I'm really eyeing off um, instead of going CHN this week. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting trade, man. So I never really considered Montoya until I saw that. Um, I've been a Ronaldo fan. So I saw Ronaldo last week and I said I was really considering him. But at the same time, say I picked up Johnston, I think it's just one or the other because they both rely heavily on tries. Yeah. I think Montoya versus Militalo. I like Militalo just a little bit better. I think after this Penrith game, the Sharks are going to really pick it up. And I just, if he stays fit, I see a lot, a lot of tries. Um, they both got really low break evens, and I guess it's just personal preference. But um, yeah, they're both very similar options. And I guess um, yeah, they're both they'll both stay on the five percent range for a bit, man. Like this is the week to jump on, or they'll get a bit pricey. Um, yeah, I'll, I really like both of these options. But to me, I don't mind spending an extra hundred or so k and getting Johnston. Although uh, Johnston's not really a pod, he'll probably end up at like seventeen percent. It's just. He's yeah, the second see, most yeah. traded in this he week. He can yes. go one fifty, yeah, for four thousand. But I can just see, you know, he's that guy that can go one fifty against the right matchups, and I'd only be playing him against the right matchups. So, yeah, I, I, I can't help it when a player like this comes along. I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I guess the center wing pods are really risky. Like, I've gone Bradman best a few weeks ago, and it, it, that move has absolutely killed me. I've played him every week. He's got no attacking stats, and I'm just. Just holding on for dear life, hoping he gets one attacking stats and such high expectations. Yeah, and and like he hasn't really been delivering. He started the season really well, um, but yeah, I think that's why I'm very scared to go Johnston because I see someone like uh, Montoya just being someone who I don't know just a bigger body that could get points elsewhere besides tries. If that makes sense. Yep. Um. Like it might just be in my head. Like his base probably isn't that great. Um, he's scored twenty nines and uh, earlier in the season, but yeah, that's where my head's at. But his break even's minus thirty three, and he's playing Melbourne this week. So 
I think if I got him in this week, I wouldn't feel great about it. But following that, it would be good. But I'd have to take the hit this week and do it. Um, although I can wait a week if I really want to, if I really want to spend maybe, who knows, and 60K. The burning question, Savs, is there any trades being saved on the horizon soon? Yes. Or- if Lou I plays, I'm saving one trade. Okay, nice. And I think you'll be tempted and you'll make one. That's just oh, I think there is, but <laughs> next week my plan is to save two trades and then um, especially if I make three, uh, two trades this week. I'll save two trades next week. And when the super buy round comes up, is that next week or the week after? Week after. So when the super buy round comes up, I'll use three trades and that'll leave me with 12, zero, nine. That'll leave me with nine trades and then I'll have seven trades after round 17. So I'll have seven trades from round 18 to 25. I mean, yeah, and still, that's going to leave you short for the buy round, too, if you do the math. That's why I really heavily tried to make sure I could save a couple because but it's going based, to be tough. And- but based on these trades, right? So if I get two buy players in this week, three buy players in in the super buy round, and another five, that's that's I'll have 11 players. So I feel yeah, like see, that's not bad. I feel yeah. like that's enough. Um, I know we haven't touched on it, but round 13, I scored 909. I hadn't saved a trade. I had 14 players. Thought I was sitting in a pretty good spot. I think the crucial thing is look at matchups if, if you're getting a pot in. Because if, you, if your matchup that you, when you get a pot in really early, is playing like the Roosters in round 17. So say you're going for. Jake Avarillo in the centers or something, they're playing the Roosters in round 17. You're going to get no points from that player when you need to play them in round 17. I feel like that's where I was semi-burnt and possibly yourself as well with Brian Kelly uh, playing Melbourne. Yeah, but no, he, he he got 40. He was really rocks and diamonds and there was a few times where he got like he got 97. So like I'm not angry in that purchase. Yeah, I'm going to be losing 30K, but... He's got some really good scores as well as his bad scores. Like he's been saved by a lot of tries from kicks, but um, yeah, yeah. I, there is definitely a, a few tries. Like Luai's been a, a really bad trade. Clemmer was a really bad trade. Like I should have had sixteen for last round, and I got very, very unlucky. But um, yeah, you know, another one. You win some, you lose some. Like look at me. I picked up CHM for three hundred k. Yep. On you know when and, and now that's turned into a good. I've already got one hundred and sixty seven k profit, and I've got those all those high scores. So yep. you win some, you lose some, and yeah, as we always like to say, try and get on plays before they go big. Like that's why I'm a big fan of Daniel Tupo this week. If you got the cash, because he's versing the Titans, I think he'll go be in for a good score. And it's same with Raymond. If Pen- all these plays don't back up, go a week early on Raymond. Um. He's a big pod that I know Jake's really keen on, and I'm very keen on him. He'll be as long as he gets 40, 50 this week. He's in straight into uh, Trip Jacket Mafia next week. Awesome. Um, I think with Nathan Cleary possibly being out, is Charlie Staines someone that you think might be a sell if Cleary doesn't play? Because obviously he's a sell in the next couple of weeks, but. I mean, Sharks is the side where he's con- he scored four tries and three tries against. Um, with no Cleary in the side, is he a play and not a sell this week considering his break even isn't high? So I was actually going to sell Staines this week until I had a look at his break even. And because of that 90, the 40 is not too bad. So really, if you think he's going to score a 10 points here at worst, he's probably going to drop 20K and 400. And that's still something I can work with. I can sell him to Suwali next week, make some money. I can do something with that. But the main reason I want to sell is exactly what you said. He's playing the Sharks this week. Um, He's scored a lot of tries in the three games versus Sharks. So um, even if Cleary doesn't play, the key thing here will be if Luai doesn't play, uh, if Luai plays, I I will 100% uh, play Staines. Either way, I think I'm going to take the gamble. I think they're just his hoodoo uh, hoodoo side and he'll score tries against them. But um, I don't think it matters if uh, Burden goes on his side or Luai goes on his side because he'll receive the ball. Yep. The issue last week was Tyron May, in my opinion, and their attack looked really flat. So um, 100% I'll be playing him if it's a Luai Burden combo or even if some, for some reason Clear is in there. Uh, yeah, I just, I've, I've got to play him. It's going to be the last week I'll, I'll probably uh, have him. And yeah, I think he'll be a bit of a pod player. I've, just, I've got to do it against the Sharks. I regretted it last time not playing him. 
Yeah, I did as well. Um, Are you playing him this week, Sats? Yeah, I'm playing him at the moment. Uh, Yves Cleary, I, I actually think I'm selling Laurie. Uh, Laurie at 520k. Uh, I mean, Take the money and run. I mean, yeah. I really could sell Nofo. Is Nofo a, a sell over Laurie? Um, I so I don't have Laurie and I do have Nofo. Um, the thing is with Nofo's free round average and stuff, I don't think it's time to sell yet. If you can back up with another poor score, then maybe he is a sell. But at this point in time, I don't hate him being a part of my final side. Like I, I haven't made my mind up, but if you think the Tigers, you know, are starting to pick up, then maybe there's more tries coming for Nofo. So at this stage, I'm holding indefinitely. But the same case could be for Laurie. Like if I own Laurie, I probably sell him. Just because he's at five twenty. Well, you have. Um, he's he's yeah. he's peaked. He scored fifty four with a line break and a try. So I think that's the biggest indication that he probably is a sell because his base isn't quite up there, and his draw is going to get is pretty hard over the next couple of weeks. Um, but Nofo is someone that still might score tries in that time, whereas a fullback finds it a bit harder to get through the line. Um, Against these harder sides, they, they've kind of got to go around them more often than not. So I think with Nofo, he's someone you can rely on. Uh, Laurie playing fullback is, yeah, very tempting. But I think the base is pretty much the same. But I see Nofo scoring more in this period of a tough run. Um, but Laurie may benefit later in the year. But, yeah, I think you've got to sell one of them at least. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. You, you might have to do that. Um, so Mitch Barnett is a very hot topic of the week. He is the third most traded out um, at the moment. I'll just make sure and confirm that. But what are your plans with the Mitch Barnett? Personally, I think I'm honestly just holding him for the season until he gets a starting edge roll, and then he'll be back to what he was glory days at the start of the season. Uh, yeah, that's it's it's fair enough. I think I I, I don't want to hold him. Um, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick. I, I just don't think Adam O'Brien's one of those super coach coach killers that you just cannot trust. So yep. really, what I want to do here is I'll be selling him to Tamalolo or Tohu Harris, and it might not be able to come next week. Um, there's a lot of guys I want to get in. I've got a lot of plans in the next seven trades. I'm really going to put together a strong side. Um, probably like twelve or thirteen for the next buy but I want it to be a strong 12. So guys that I don't want to really be buying too many guys I want to sell. I want to hold most of these guys, um, and that's how you're not wasting your trades there because I'm not going to have a heap left over. So uh, that's my plan. Um, and, yeah, to, to get – obviously to get all these guys, I want to have to sell them. So, yeah, it's looking like Barnett's a hold. Like I'll probably be holding him for one or two more weeks, and if he gets that edge spot, then sweet. But I just don't think it's going to happen. It's just like O'Brien should have done this two weeks ago. Connor Watson should be starting and Barnett should be getting 80 minutes on an edge, but it's just not going to happen. Like I just really believe it's not going to happen, but uh, yeah, everyone's jumping off. He could become a pod man. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen either, but I think there something's going to happen. That's going to force Adam O'Brien's hand, whether that's um, Fitzgibbon getting another niggle or, um, Brody Jones going down or Brody Jones having a shocker or it seems like they love Fitzgibbon. So no matter how he plays, he's got his spot. Um, But yeah, I I think I'm just holding on at the price. I can't justify moving him on when I could a hundred K less. I can move on Uta Kamano. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. But yeah, I just, I just I guess like if you can sell him to like a, a guy like Tamalolo or Toe Harris, who I believe would definitely be, you know, keepers and not be pending on, you know, where the coach plays him, then yeah, I think it's, it's smart to do that. So I agree with the people selling him this week. I just, yeah, I'm not in a position to do that. Yeah, sweet. Um, so just wanted to let you guys know, Top Sport have jumped on board. Uh, make sure you join and use the code SC Experience to... Uh, they'll sort you out. They'll, they'll hook you up with some sweet stuff. Uh, Top Sport, use the Top Sport app. Uh, gamble responsibly. Uh, we've put our best bets out on Top Sport pretty much every week. Uh, I mean, we've looked good for the first few legs for most of them, but then we've gone down miserably for some other legs, haven't we, Mikey? Yeah, it's, it hasn't been the greatest star, so I'd say hey, we'll get there. Uh, so I crawled back. To uh, I wouldn't say glory, but I put up a bet last night, which was Josh Adokar not to score a try. 
Unfortunately, you couldn't put that in a multi, but they've got the market where you can choose if a player is not going to score a try or not. And I nailed it. Everyone in the back line scored a try except uh, Adokar. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I didn't put Adokar in any of my main multis. I really didn't think, uh, yeah, he'd, he'd score a try either. So that, that was a, that was a good one. So yeah, um, jump onto Top Sports, really helping us out. It's going to help the show out mainly for next season. Um, but yeah, jump on board, use the code SC Experience, and let them know that you've come from us. Let us know that you've um, let us know that you've signed up, so we can. Give you a high five or something. Uh, so moving on to another hot topic, Cody Walker. You have Cody Walker. Yes. Of and course. and what what's your gut feel about him for this run coming up? Well, uh, I'm keen. I uh, had him from the start of the season, and I, I I definitely see in his horizon if he stays fit, he's got a big score coming. I think kind of like how we saw Guffo give a redemption performance for not picking me. I'm expecting that to happen this round for Cody Walker. Yep. Um, for 533K, I think it's very scary not to own him. If he doesn't get in that blue side, which, you know, look with how Luai played pending injuries, I don't think he will. He's a crucial number for that buy round. Um, we know what Cody Walker can do, and I hate not owning these players with these huge ceilings. He's a keeper till the end of the year. He has been a bit disappointing, but even with the disappointing, he's really got some good scores in there, and he's still, he actually hasn't cracked over 100 once this year. They're coming. I really believe they're coming. He versus the Cowboys in the buy round. Um, and yeah, as you said, Knights, Broncos, Tigers, after that, Bulldogs, Warriors, Dragon. It's, it's so good. He's versus a lot of the hard teams, you know, all the way up until round 20, he's got a nice favorable draw. So, to me, yeah, 533K, you got him at a discount of 122000 It's It's a good move. But at the same time, you know, it, it, it might not work out, but I think it'd just be very scary not to own him over this this period. I agree. Um, I personally, I uh, don't have him at the moment, but it re- really depends on Luai. If Luai doesn't play, he's in my side and I'll feel really good about it, but Oh, I just feel like after seeing Luai in Origin yesterday, towards the end of the year, he's going to be a crucial 5-8 to have in your side. Especially if they rest Cleary, which, you know, it just depends what they're doing. Like, I'm was I'm very much considering Luai to Johnson, but I'm going to give Luai a chance. Uh, but in that super bye week, if I don't, haven't seen enough from Luai, yeah, I really want Sean Johnson, I think. He's a, he's a crucial, he could be a crucial number for the next buy round, especially if Townsend's nowhere to be seen. So here's another one that's slipping under the radar. Uh, yep. Uh, Valentine Holmes has been confirmed to back up, which is great news for owners, which is including myself. Uh, Valentine Holmes, is he on the radar before round 17 for you or is he on the radar at all? No, nah, not at all. Um, personally, I think there is a lot of great center wings for this next upcoming buy. I already mentioned I'm very keen on, you know, I like the ones you mentioned in Matalino and um, Ma- Montoya, but I am um, not, Mat- yeah, Matalino Montoya, but Molitalo, I'm really keen yeah. On- Militalo, yeah. It's just so many tongue twisters. Um, I'm really keen on, yeah, as I said, I like Johnson, I like Ramian, Tupo, Suwali, which I know a lot of people have. Like, you know, right there, those three, that really, I don't really have room for, you know, for him. So yep. I'm, I'm happy just to kind of load up with some center wings for this next buy round and then run with them for the run home. So, uh, but yeah, you know, I can see why you would buy homes in, but I'm trying to avoid picking up non-origin, uh, you know, plays that won't play the buy round unless they're a Puppenhausen, David Fafita and co. Like that's different because yep. I think you're going to need them for the run home or you could fall behind. I agree. And so what? So what's your plan leading into the end of the season? What's the goal for your team? Uh, my goal for the team is, honestly, I haven't started where I wanted to. I've stayed relevant. I want to try and pull off a crazy top 1,000 finish. Um, I do, but you know, I'm in a lot of these cash leagues. I'm doing pretty good in the Turbo Hammies Cup, and I think I'm coming 13th in total points. So to be coming fifth on the leaderboard, I'm really happy with that. I'd like to yeah, get in and you know place with a lot of these cash comps. So, yeah, my, my goal is just to finish as high as I can, have fun with it, um, You'll see me do a lot of crazier moves as we go through to, to, to try and to get up there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an exciting year so far. And, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to for this next buy. And I think um, at first I thought this I didn't like the buy players for this round, but 
there's a lot more appearing. I'm like, you know what? I, I really do think this this buy round, um, you know, you can make a bit of ground on it because a lot of people went too hard on the first, which could have worked out. So I think, you know, if you're one of these guys with trades or you've got a tactic and plan, I think it can really pay off in 17. And I'd love to, to kind of, you know, just get a bit closer to you guys who's a who's a who's a pulling ahead way too far from you. So I'd like to close the gap. Yeah, there I feel like the Tims and the Costas and the Spies are pulling a lot further away from me. Um rank six forty five oh, at the moment. Even oh. you. You're away you're far away away from me, but yeah. Yeah. You are all killing it, man. Yeah, oh well I feel like I've I've been on the decline every single week and I've just got I've just I feel like I've just got to save some trades for the back end so I don't fall too far behind then. Um, and just rely on the players that I have to pull me out of it. Um, and captain choices is absolutely crucial. Like if we had not Captain uh, Gutherson, uh, I dropped out of the ten k this week yeah, easily. Yeah, and I, I would prob- have captained um, Hines. So, yeah. but still, that's enough for me to drop a thousand spots. Yeah, exactly. And um, Matt Duffy, Matt Duffy, how about that? Did you listen last oh. week? I did, and you're the reason I brought in Kemi Bromwich because I was like, Sabs didn't trust his gut. <laughs> Sabs didn't trust his guts. I was like, Michael, you freaking trust your gut. And, yeah, of course, my gut was wrong. So it was it was funny. But, yeah, you're the, yeah. after that story, I was like, nah, you're going to regret it if he scores a double. And I think <laughs> the main reason is Kenny Bromwich was that super trade I did last year. Yep. I thought I could do it again, and it just proved me that. To be I fair. Kenny Bromwich now. To be fair, he's named this week. So are you going to play him? I'm playing him at the moment. Yeah, I am against um, the matchup in the Warriors, which I think will be a tight one. But, um, yeah, as I said, um, it just depends on who backs up. Like if Cleary, Luai and all these guys back up, I think I only want to play one out of Curran and Kenny Bromwich. Um, purely, as I said, if one of them are out, I'm going to need to use Junior Paulo. So I've got to play safety first. So, I, yeah, I, I don't think I will play him, but at this stage I am. Okay, Origin representatives – Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai, Isaiah Yeo, Brian Toho, and Kurt Capewell have been omitted. Really? All of them? All of them. Uh, Liam Martin is not there, so Liam Martin will play. So wait, to, to, to say that again. You got all, or basically all of them. All of them except Liam Martin. So Jerome Luai is gone. Oh, and Toho. That, yep. that, that's going to make the round tougher for a, for a lot of people, including both of us. And um, looks like I'm going to have to make that. I'm going to have to make that second trade. Um, geez, yeah, that that throws a spanner in the works. I was really relying on on to- on Luai to play. I thought I thought he'd be in. Yeah, I thought he would too. Um, that kind of hurts with stains with all those players I just lost. I think he's a play. Like, would you play Simonson at fullback? Over? I, I don't oh, know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he pretty much will have yeah. the same output as what he would on the wing because it, it just kick returns really, right? Yeah. We, um, with the way they played, I understand why they're doing it. But honestly, lads jump on the Sharks 1-12. to 12. <laughs> You reckon? <laughs> Yeah, like oh, I'm a bit worried now with the way they played last week. Um, I, I, I did back our I, juniors, but they've I, they've got to they've got to fight back here. They've got to earn back the Panthers' trust. These young guys, like they they can do it. But um, yeah, I, Ivan Ivan will get it into them, and yeah, it uh, makes sense. Okay, he's resting hold, the hold players. on. So, Origin representatives Nathan Cleary, John Lumley, and Coach Capo have been admitted, while Brent Naden has joined the 19 man squad. You didn't say uh, Brian Toto there. That might mean he's playing. So. So Liam Martin is there, uh, Zach Targo, Linu, Hopgood, Kenny on the bench. Appy is playing. Yeah, we knew that. The rest are out. Um, Toho is not there. Oh, that's, that's huge. Oh, jeez. Absolutely huge. Uh, well, live trading. Luai to Cody Walker is done. Yep, there you go. I uh, have to do it. Um, but that's another captain option for this week. So I guess... Let's stem that to um, our bold predictions and captain choices for the week. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll quickly go first. Um, I was going to VC Tom, but obviously he's being ruled out. So for me, my vice captain is going to go straight on Angus Crichton. He'll be my VC this round. Um, and my captain choice, which I had it on very early, and backing up what I said earlier in the show, man, is, is Cody Walker. Uh, I haven't had many luck with uh, Cody Walker this round, and I'm 
I'm ready to to try it again. I think it's with all these guys getting rested. I don't know in Tedesco anymore. Sodom to Gutho. So I think yeah, it's it's time to go Cody Walker. I don't like too many of my other options. Um, you know, I do think Nico Hines is another good one. But um, I think we'll see a bit of fluctuation this week with all these key guys out. You're going to have to try and risk it for the biscuit. So, God, that hurts having those three pennant players out. It, I've got to really look at my side. It right? really it's, does. I don't it, have a strong 17 anymore. And does it make Staines a play now? Like, uh, he's... I've, I've, I've got to play him with all these guys out, as I said, just as a hoodoo. But um, I guess if you're someone like me that's just lost three players, um, <laughs> I guess it makes the could make the loop a little interesting because you don't have heaps of reserves. But then again, I've got Burbo, so... Ignore me. Yeah, so Nico. And Savs, who are you captaining, mate? Uh, well, my VC is on Cody Walker at the moment. So, obviously, yeah, my tactics have changed. Um, the loop with Burbo in there, obviously, it's going to make things a bit hard. Um, I guess Manly have three centers on the bench, which is very interesting. So, that might change come game day. Um, let me just double check that. So, Cust, Sipley, Burbo, and Suli. So they've got Cust, who's a 5'8". They've got Sipley, who's a middle, Ben Trebojevic, and Moses Suli. So even if um, Burbo is on the bench, he might come on as an edge forward. So that could actually not be too bad, especially with Jobo backing up from origin. He might not get massive minutes. Yeah, you, you know early, so yeah, you know, they play the first game, so, so you know. But yeah, yep. As as we expected, this is this is an interesting and tough round because it's going to affect a lot of coaches. Yeah, for sure. And, and my captain, my captain's going to be on Hines. Um, I think. Yeah. Uh, nice you know, he scored yeah. seventy one. He was qu- it was a quiet game. It was a close game, and they've really um, like it seems like everyone's forgotten about Hines, and people are asking, do I trade him for his cash? No one would be considering trading him if he was worth 600k because he's producing so well and I think he can just turn up again um if he wasn't my captain I think I'd nearly go Gutherson again yeah he's he's another one that yeah he's he's been going great I think he's he's another good option uh, this is the week where I'm just going to somewhat, I don't know why, but trust my gut and hopefully it repays the faith. <laughs> I agree. Uh, bold predictions for the week. Um, pretty quick one, but I think it's been as informative as it can be. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go this week. I'm going to back up. I think Tupo is a good buy. So I'm going to go Tupo to score 80 plus against the Titans. Um, I'm also going to back Staines, man. He's, he's going to, I'm going to go Staines to score two tries. Um, and yeah, 70 plus, obviously, if he's got two tries. Okay, Staines, two tries, 70 plus, yep. Yep, with uh, Tupo, 80 plus. Yep. And then let's let's go Walker. We're going to go Walker to get his first ton of the year. I know it's not super bold, but there's still three in there and I need tries, so. I like it. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, this is very tough. Yeah, just getting harder, man. This week, I guess oh, I really want to back you. Okay, let's go. Montoya seventy plus against the Storm. I'm not getting him in, so this is a change of tactics for my bold predictions. Um, I usually go with players I've freshly got in. Um, okay, well, I'll stick with that theme and go CHN um, to score eighty five plus. And then a third one, Hines to go 120 plus. Yeah, nice. Like it. Um, and yeah. Sounds sounds good. good I guess. To go back to a classic Mike and Sab's um, style podcast. Uh, yeah, we've both been really busy. Sorry I've been missing on the show. And yeah, hopefully, you know, we can get a, you know, back to. To a full crew, but it's just been crazy. Yeah, and like even um even I've missed out on some shows. It's it's been crazy. This is exactly why we changed the show name to the Super Coach Experience. So you didn't have to rely on us to be available and line up times every single week to keep the and, show going. Yeah, so no matter what, we'll give you content and yeah, you know, bunch of mates giving you some content and um yeah, you know, I feel like you know Tim, Jake, and Maxie, or you know, all the guys that help us out, Henry and Co. Uh, 
they do a really good job. So yeah, so and uh, guys, like so uh, Jay Linton. I guess there there will be weeks like that where you get two podcasts with different types of people, and that's it's going to be the point of the show. But thanks, guys, for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed your week. State of Origin, uh, it was great, and I can't wait to see the footy this week. Um, make sure to join Top Sport with the code SC Experience. We'll put all the links in all the posts so you don't miss out. Make sure you jump on board. Cheers, guys, for listening. Thanks, guys. Would anybody like some pound cake? Cake, 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 cake? I'd like some pound cake. Cake, 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 c